Hey, somebody needs to untangle the extension cord. You have? Excellent. Good morning, afternoon, or evening. You are listening to The Professional Noticer. Hello, everyone. I'm Andy Andrews. Hey, thank you for making me a part of your week. My purpose here today and with every show we do is to play the part of a best friend or a coach. I want to help you live the life of your wildest dreams by giving you access to the greatest mentors the world has to offer today. The Professional Noticer is sponsored this week by our friends at Tucker ATV. You know, the variety of power sport products at Tucker ATV will blow your mind. Hustler Turf Equipment, the entire line of Echo Power Tools, not just what you see in the big box source, but the entire line. And of course, Tucker ATV carries every make and model of Polaris ATVs. They have all of them even the Big Ranger crew. And you have to see the showroom, taxidermy, antique displays, and an indoor porch with its porch swing, the, the, the awesome chairs, the television, the big screen television, and the free coffee. Of course, the free coffee. Stop in and meet Shannon and Lisa Tucker. They treat customers like family, which is why people from 14 states have done business with Tucker ATV. Highway 43 North in Jackson, Alabama. Tucker ATV, the small town business with the national reputation. Observations and answers, that's what we do here on The Professional Notice. As you know, we love it when somebody comes to the table with both, and that's the situation we find ourselves in today. We have somebody that I am just meeting for the first time, but I feel like I already know her, because her father is one of my best friends. Um, our guest today is a wife, a mom, a librarian, and an author. And she also teaches Bible studies, which uh, really kind of got her into this author thing, I think. She is also, uh, if, if you watch uh, Wisdom Harbor, she is um, Mark's daughter, Mark Foley's daughter, Dr. Mark Foley, who's a contributor with Wisdom Harbor. So please welcome Molly Sawyer. Molly, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, I am I am excited about this. I've heard so much about you and about your family. And so I hear the stories, you know, Mark and I see each other at least once a week. And, and so I was very excited to get this. It's a book called Every Word, A Reader's 90-Day Guide to the Bible. And this, not only is it a beautiful book, it's well-written, and it's, I, I, I don't mean to say it's simple, it's easy to follow. Yeah, no, I think simple is a good word. So, so explain Explain what this book is and, and how we are to use this. This is a resource to help people read the Bible for themselves. It has a 90-day reading plan, and we can get into the 90 in a minute, but a 90-day reading plan that takes you through the Bible chronologically. And there's commentary on all 66 books of the Bible. There's some historical notes. Um, there's a timeline that's helpful. And it's just supposed to be something that you have in one hand while you have your Bible in the other hand to help you read and follow the story of scripture. And um, we also, there's an, on the YouVersion Bible app, there's, a, there's an app there that has the reading plan. There's daily prompts that you can use with that. There's weekly prompts in the book, but those two resources are great to use together to help how, you read all God's you word. How did the idea of this come about? It was a group of girlfriends. We were planning to do something through a summer. This was 10 years ago now. And uh, one of my friends, and when I say we, this has been a collaborative project. Um, I'm just one of the co-authors. But uh, one of my friends said, hey, I've, I've really wanted to read through the Bible chronologically. And I hear you can read through the whole Bible in about 78 hours. And so we thought, well, we're, we're going to need more, some w more wiggle room than 78 hours. We'll go with 90. That feels like a round number. And we Googled a chronological reading plan and we set off and really what and gathered some more friends. And what started as just pretty much a challenge. You know, I think I probably had that in my heart more like, sure, I'm going to read through the Bible because I'd never done it before. I had been a student of the Bible, but just figured someday when I was old, I would get around to reading all of it. 
But uh, what started as a challenge really became a journey of transformation. And by the end of those 90 days, after we had wrestled through hard things together and made it through the parts that feel like you're, you're slogging through, but also getting to the end, we realized this is really important, what we just did. And, and it's just, it took off from there. More groups gathered. We started doing it more and more and a book came out of it and to help because people kept saying, how do you do this? What do you do? And so we put it, put it in a book so you can hold it. Yeah. And, and you, you mentioned, and I caught, I caught when you said just a minute ago, this is really important that Mm -hmm. we, we did this and we thought this was really important. Tell me, I mean, other than what might be obvious for us, why, why is it important? Why was that important for you and what might be important for somebody else? Um, I think we have a lot of misconceptions about who God is. I think we have a lot of misconceptions about the Bible. I mean, it's a, it's a big book. It can be intimidating. So a lot of times we just rely on other people to tell us what's in there. But we are told in scripture to love the Lord, our God, with all our hearts and all our minds. And so we should be using what he's given us to know him. And he is the, the Bible is the mystery, not God. Or I'm sorry, said that wrong. God is the mystery, not the Bible. The Bible is a book that he's given us to read and to come and know him. And so and we're made for relationship with him. So we we should take him up on that. And it's, you know, what, the number one bestseller of all times. So you don't want to miss that. Right. Yeah, that's true. What, there had to have been several points maybe or several times when you – when you read something and, and kind of went back to meet your buddies, your co-authors and said, sure. <laughs> did you know this? I didn't know this. We did, did that all the time. <laughs> did you? What, oh, what's, one sure. that, what's one that you really remember? Oh, I mean, Judges is a doozy, that book. And it's honestly, I can say, I mean, a lot of the books are my favorites now uh, because I see why they're there and they just get richer and richer every time I read them. But judges, the first time you read it, you think what in the world, how is this in the Bible? And it's rated R in places and yeah, for, for sex and violence. Yes. All the things. And so it's super gruesome, but, um, yeah, we, we definitely, and I remember one of my friends, this really stuck with me. We kind of gotten through a hard, I don't even remember where we were in, in, in it, but we were in the depths of it that summer. And she looked at us and she said, God is not who I thought he was. He's different than what I thought he was. And that really was all of our experiences of, um, he, he got a lot bigger. Um, and also I understood how he truly is all the, there's the verse in Exodus that talks about he, how he is, uh, merciful and gracious and abounding in love and um, uh, in faithfulness and forgiving it iniquity, but he does not clear the guilty. And that's a tension there of, of you're thinking, how can he be all those things that he is? And, and Jesus, to see how he sent his son to, to, to fulfill all the promises he made through the Old Testament. It's just, it is pretty mind blowing when you sit down and take it all in and uh, you realize he's more than what you thought he was. And his, his story that he's writing is bigger and better than what we even really thought we understood <laughs> before we read it, right. what we've been told. How, did, how does, how does, how did doing this personally benefit you? And and there's a second part of that question I'd like to ask. How did it benefit your children? I know you have three kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like I said, I I met, I feel like I, I I had grown up in a home where the Bible was opened and studied and talked about, and that was my habit too. But I realized that I, once I did this, I realized I had read my Bible a lot, but not read a lot of my Bible. And so encountering God as he reveals himself and understanding how much he loves me and the the extent that he would go. And it felt like after reading 
all of scripture, it felt like I realized he had reached through all of eternity to bring me back to himself. And so really understanding and comprehending the extent of his love for me. Um, also understanding what purpose that gives my life, what I'm called into and to live my story um, and to live my story in light of the story of scripture gives me incredible purpose to then be the invitation to others to come and know God. Uh, and then what I have to look forward to, I think, um, you know, we 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 sit in church, but the idea of, you know, revelation, that book feels really fuzzy and something that people most, most people want to avoid. And we know that we're going to heaven when we, if we know Jesus, we know we're going to heaven when we die. But I really, I think the thing that changed for me was, uh, I, I encountered God and now I recognize who he is. And uh, this is such a silly example, but in that movie elf, I was telling my girls this earlier this week, but that movie elf, when he is told that Santa Claus is coming to the department store and he gets so excited, he goes, I know him. I know him. That's, that's how I feel about Jesus. Like I know him now. And I, um, I, I had a relationship with him before that, but it is so much richer and deeper now. And so even moving towards death, I know who's going to meet me there and whose hand is going to take mine and walk me into resurrection life. And I understand what that is more than I ever did before. I think it was very fuzzy to me before. So I, so with my children, I can talk about all those things. And under, I think too, I sat in a lot of church growing up and um, somehow I missed that there was a unified story through scripture. And so getting to talk about that with my kids and connecting all those dots for them, uh, I think is really important. And I, and they get it, they know it. And um, I don't know if maybe curriculum is different now. Uh, people are thinking more about the story of scripture, but that, that was lost on me back then. Um, and so that's something as an adult, I've really come to understand and see. But, uh, but also you asked, like once, I had read all of the Bible and understood that story. Every other Bible teaching since then has gone into technicolor for me. Really? Uh, Cause I have, I, I understand where it falls in the story and understand God's heart and uh, of what he's doing and why he's doing that and where the story is going. So it's just context. And then just that, that understanding and knowledge gets layered upon layered. So it's something's being built up in me and it gets deeper and richer every time. So I, I really do. I feel like reading the Bible, like all the way through all of it is really reading 101 for those who say that they follow Jesus and know him because we need to read what, how we need to read his word to us. I've, I've read it through. I think five times now, and I'm still amazed at the things that I noticed that I didn't notice. Mm -hmm. And and I I am also shocked at how much of our modern culture some some of the sayings we use mm -hmm. that came from the Bible. You know, mm -hmm. like um. um a bird in the hands were two in the bush. And, mm -hmm. and you know, when, if the horse is out of the barn, it's too late to lock it. And, <laughs> and there's the so proverbs, many of those. Yeah, the wisdom. Yeah, so many of those things. And, and um, you know, living along the coast here, uh, one of the things that, that we say that we kind of go by is red sky at morning, sailor take warning, red sky at night, sailor's delight. And, you know, Come to find out, Jesus said that. That was yes. what Jesus said. So that's <laughs> yeah. just um, it's amazing. Been around for a while. I know that is. So yeah. what? What do you? What do you suggest? I mean, what to obviously use the book, every word, mm -hmm. a reader's ninety-day guide to the Bible. Obviously, set aside the time to do this. Mm -hmm. But but what are some other 
things that you go, now, hey, if you do this, this will be easier. You have more success, more fulfillment. (laughs) What are some tips for succeeding with this program? Well, don't get caught up in the 90. The reason why we say 90 is because I can do anything for 90 days. A year ask is a lot harder. So it's important to read any book in a short measured amount of time, because that's how you take it all in. You remember the beginning by the time you get to the end, Um, you can follow the themes, the characters, that sort of thing. So that same approach is what we take with the Bible. So whether if 90 is something that you're like, oh, I could never do that, but choose, have a plan. And I think having a plan is what gets you off the ground in this. The other thing is gathering people have more than just yourself doing it with you because that really makes it rich to a cool experience to get to bounce ideas off of other your your buddies who are doing it with you and um, it's accountability it's motivation too because you know they're doing it so it keeps you moving forward um also having a readable translation we have here in the united states we have access to so many different English translations of the Bible. Um, one that I really love to to read when I'm doing this is the New Living Translation. It's a very readable um, version. That's that's what I, I do it. too. I I, I you know to me that makes it a story. That's yes, just absolutely. So that's my favorite translation. Um, and just having the mindset that this is kind of like marathon training. Uh, not that I've ever run one run shorter distances, but uh, people who I know who run marathons, they, uh, they make sacrifice. They, they shift their schedules. They schedule what they're you near know, their training. So right. making a set time, uh, being prepared with you know the Bible. Um, I have to have an automatic coffee maker. I have to have coffee already brewed for me when I wake up in the mornings. <laughs> and so my time of when I get up and spend time in the word is early in the morning. There's no distractions, but, and then I work towards that where I make sure I'm heading to bed at a decent amount of time, you know, decent time the night before, you know, you just, you, you work your life around what your priority is. And so to make this priority, you're going to have to shift some things. Um, other I love something that's really helpful to me on, I mentioned the YouVersion Bible app, which has a wonderful, so many wonderful resources on it. You can find any Bible translation. You can find a lot of different reading plans on there, uh, but there's a listening component. And so what I do to, to read the 90 day read is about an hour commitment a day, 45 minutes to an hour, depending how fast of a reader you are. There is a, the listening component where, so I listen and read at the same time. That really helps me take it in. Also, I find as I get older, it's harder for me to see my Bible, <laughs> the words on the Bible. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so that helps me. It, it helps me keep going, but it also paces me. It keeps me going. And so when you're reading at such a fast pace, um, it's, it's good. You know, you, there's, a lot of us are deep dive studiers, but we, we like to say when we're talking about the 90 day, this is an astronaut view. You're flying over so that you can understand the expanse, the expansive story. And so it's a flyover. Uh, you can go back and dive deep after 90 days or when you're done, but that listening and reading at that pace kind of keeps you moving. Um, and it, I feel like there was one more thing I was going to say. It may come to me in a second, but those, those are my big pointers. Uh, to keep on, you know, oh, this was the one thing. Uh, as you're reading, focus on what you do understand, not on the, don't get tripped up in the things you don't. And usually what, you know, we say, make it, keep a notebook of the things that you want to go back and dive into and say, what in the world was that? And do right. your research. But also some of that shakes out as you keep reading and you go, oh, okay. I understand that that's that's why that was happening or who that was or whatever it is it kind of shakes out so those are my major tips that's great that's great advice and especially like the advice about don't get tripped up over something that you don't understand or Mm -hmm. or you think well i don't think like that or yeah you know i think it's I think it's very revealing what your friend said about God is not who I thought he was. Um, Because I think 
that despite the fact that uh, we we read in the Bible that we were created in God's image, it's our it's our tendency to create God in our image, you know, and go, yeah, the God that I believe in wouldn't do this, and the God mm-hmm. I believe in does this, and then you read God's word, and you go, oh. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah he's, he's not what i thought yeah so. absolutely that was that is a great point we're very good at making god in our own image rather than imaging him and so we have to know who he is how he reveals himself through his word to know how we're supposed to image him and who he is and and also to understand that i think a lot of people have the, the misconceptions because they're only reading sound bites from the bible and uh when you when you get through the whole Old Testament, a lot of people think, oh, that's just the God of wrath and I don't really like him. But everything he does through the Bible is motivated by love. And it's all um, just, I I remember reading the prophets one time, Jeremiah, the prophet. uh, And I, that was a hard one for me to get to get through for a long time. And I was reading it. This, this testifies to why we need to read with with someone else, but the, one of the girls in the group that I was reading with her, she came back and her perspective was God is so, he is such a loving father. Look at how many chances he gave them and how he kept making that appeal to his people to come back to him and know him. And I thought, wow, that's not at all what I was focusing, focusing on or understanding as I was reading that. Um, and that shifted that book for me. And now I can't help but read it going, God, you are so patient and so long suffering with us. And your just judgment. That is the God, that is the kind of God I want to serve. I want, I would not want him to be any less just than he is. We would not want to serve a God that was not just. And uh, so we can trust that. That's also something that draws me into trusting him and his judgment. Yeah. And he's given us, you know, I mean, I could just, you know, it just, it keeps rolling, but then, uh, then he's given us his son to stand, to take that judgment for us. Like that's the beauty and the, the, the thing that's so mind boggling of with his love that he's, he's given us his son to stand in between us and his judgment. So it, all that just comes to light more and more every time we go through it. But, um, but one thing we didn't talk about, and I do want to make sure the thing that is also very, you know, I talked a little bit about 90 and doing it in a short amount of time, but the chronological bit is pretty important too. I feel like was very, uh, helps me a lot in under, you know, following that story of scripture. And I think a lot of people don't realize that our Bibles are not put in chronological order. They're in by genre, right. but this reading plan, um, you, you read the prophets while you're reading the history. So you understand why the prophets were saying what they were saying. And that had always been lost on me. And I think it's right, really hard to read right. the prophets if you don't understand the history and what has been happening. Uh, in the New Testament, we read, we we pause in Acts and go and read the, the letters that Paul wrote to those churches, which I think is a really cool way to understand why Paul's saying what he's saying in those letters. I was teaching through Ephesians yesterday, and it's really important to understand the character of that Ephesian church to understand why, and of Ephesus, of that city, to understand why Paul was saying what he's saying. So uh, so that's one of the benefits, I think, of reading it chronologically. It, it adds life. Uh, well, you don't add life to the Bible, but you know what I'm saying. It adds, yeah, yeah. you're putting it together better. Thank you so much for this. I I really appreciate your time. The book can be purchased on Amazon, obviously. And you you also, you guys have done a Spanish version. Yes, that's brand new. Just in January, our Spanish translation came out. So we are hoping to get this in the hands of Spanish readers and get that out. You people. will. I think, you know, that's one of those things that I, I keep a couple of Spanish translations of certain books around because I, I just like everybody else, I'm always running into Spanish speaking people and mm-hmm. to be able to, even though I can't speak their language, to be able to say, 
Hey, here. This is great. <laughs> yeah. But so, thank you, Molly, for for taking your time. And I and I just I've got to say, um, we're we're gonna have everywhere that you can contact Molly and everywhere you can get the book on on the show notes. But I also want to say that I know that you're a wife, you're a mom of three kids, but I want to tell you, your daddy is really proud of you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And um, I'm a big fan of your dad and yeah. uh, and now of you. And so oh, thank you. I'm a big for fan of his us. and of yours, too. Thank well, you. Thank you. Every you. word, a reader's 90-day guide to the Bible. Thank you, Molly Sawyer. I appreciate it. Thanks. I'm Andy Andrews, the professional noticer, harnessing common sense and wisdom to plow through challenges all the way to an answer for you. And I think that'll do it for this week. Get us out of here, Matthew. So, ladies and gentlemen, and to the boys and girls who aspire to become ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of another episode of The Professional Noticer. In a world where common sense has become a superpower, I'm harnessing the tiny bit of mental energy I have for you, seeking wisdom, making observations, and endeavoring to answer tough questions in a way that will empower your family and your business. I'm Andy Andrews. Until next week, goodbye. This episode of The Professional Noticer was produced by Matt Limpert. The Noticer theme written and performed by Sugarcane Jane. Book ribbons for the cast and crew provided by Twinkle and Smoke of Beverly Hills. Additional financial consideration provided by GrammarNazi.com. Moms, dads, are you appalled at your child's use of the English language? Do you wish for a way to come down hard when you hear something like, me and Frank are going to... Well, maybe it's time you subscribe to GrammarNazi.com. At GrammarNazi.com, we coach you on what to listen for and how to respond. Words like ain't are mild and should only be punished by solitary confinement in the cooler for a few days. More serious language crimes like me and Frank or all us are going to, these should be punished by repeating the correct usage and a, a diet of bread and water. For more help in how to discipline your child's English, it's GrammarNazi.com.